So this is what my kitchen countertops looked like before. And this is what they look like after. It is such a dramatic transformation. I'm gonna be covering a lot in this video, so I'm gonna go ahead and leave a timestamp down in the description box. That way you can jump forward to whatever part you came here for. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started first with what my countertops look like after the first six months in this household of seven people. If you were to just walk into my kitchen today, first of all, I don't think you would look at my countertops and know right away that it was contact paper. I feel like applying it the way I applied mine just makes it look so seamless. So it has held up better against stains than I really thought it would. This tiny little dot is a stain that's on the left-hand side of our stove. And we figured out pretty quickly that tomato-based items will stain, but only if it's left on the surface for quite a while. And this is one of those instances where there was a drop of something on the counter, it didn't get cleaned off for a while, and it was just this one little spot that I could not get to go away. So this next one isn't even a stain. This is a tiny little hole in the contact paper that I actually created the day I put this paper on. I didn't really know what I was doing. It was one of the first pieces I put on and I just jabbed a hole right into it. And here's another example of me not really paying attention to what I'm doing. So I scraped something across the edge of this countertop and really scuffed up this one little spot. And then the only other stain that there really is is on the left-hand side of the sink, there's this little orangish spot where it's discolored. I'm sure it's probably also from something tomato-based, but I honestly don't remember how this one got here. When you have this many kids, stuff just happens. Now let's go over a list of supplies you will need. I used the DC Fix brand white and gray marble contact paper. It is the only one I would suggest. Also, I would suggest an X-Acto knife. Yes, you will use a pair of scissors, but I would not do this project without an X-Acto knife. Extra blades for that X-Acto knife. A pair of scissors. And instead of a credit card, I would use one of these spatulas either clear or white silicone, and a caulk gun. Also, to secure the contact paper underneath the edge of the countertop, you'll want to use a handheld stapler. So since I've had these countertops in place for about six months now, I'm gonna show you how to install them by replacing some of the stained and damaged pieces that I showed you earlier. So whether you are replacing a piece of contact paper or putting it on for the first time, you're going to want to remove the old silicone from around your sink. I then took my vinegar water solution and cleaned really well all around the sink where the silicone had been. Next, I peeled up the contact paper that I want to replace. Luckily, with this particular piece, there's not any contact paper overlapping it on either side, so this piece I can just peel right up. But if you ever want to replace a piece that does have another piece overlapping it, I will show you later in this video how to do that. I also cleaned the surface really well with the vinegar water solution where I removed the contact paper before I lay down the new piece. I know some people use a Windex method when applying the contact paper, but I have not done that. I make sure mine is completely dry before I put the contact paper down. So to decide what length of contact paper I need for this section, I turn it upside down with the grid facing up and I lay it over the area I need it to cover. Once I see how much length that is, I add a couple of notches and cut a little over what I really need. Then I flip it back right side up and I place it on the counter exactly where I want it to go. This piece is going to be around the corners of the sink, so I want it to overlap the edge of the sink by a couple of inches. And how I get started is by peeling back that paper by several inches 
and taking that first strip, lining it up exactly where I want it, also leaving a little bit of an overlap on that very back corner and then starting to press it down right against that edge. With one hand, I grab a hold of that extra paper that's underneath and that's what I use to slowly release a little bit more of the contact paper at a time. Then with my other hand, I use the spatula and I slowly go from that inside corner out, kind of using it like a squeegee to smooth out all of the air bubbles as I go. I have this first section completely smoothed out. I'll use that other hand to pull on the paper and release another inch or so, and then I'll start working on smoothing that section out. And if you mess up, just lift the contact paper up a little bit and use your spatula to work that bubble out. It's pretty forgiving as long as you don't let the contact paper start to fold over and stick to itself. And this is the most important step of putting contact paper around your sink. Using my X-Acto knife, I'm going around and cutting off the excess contact paper. I'm not cutting off every bit of it. I'm still leaving a good quarter of an inch or so overlapping the side of the sink for now. Then I take my spatula and I push that contact paper up into that little lip of the side of the sink. Then I take my X-Acto knife and I push it right up against that little ledge of the sink and I use that as my guide to cut off that last little bit of extra contact paper that is still hanging over on the corners of the sink. When you're done trimming off that last little bit, take your spatula again and go back and push in any extra contact paper that will fit underneath that lip of the sink. Next, I'm going to seal the contact paper around the edges of the sink using this clear silicone. You could also use white, and white would probably hide any flaws better, but I personally like the way the clear looks. So you just wanna run a straight bead of the silicone all the way around the edge of the sink, and then I like to go back and use my finger to kind of make it smooth, and that also helps push it into that little crevice between the countertop and the sink. And even if you really don't need to replace any pieces of your contact paper on your countertops, just peeling up the old silicone and replacing it with new silicone can dramatically improve the look of your countertops. Next, I'm going to show you how I got these perfect seamless edges and corners on the countertop and on the backsplash. Using my spatula, I'm pushing the contact paper up into the edge of the metal strip that was already on the original countertop. Then I'm taking my X-Acto knife and I'm pushing it up against that bottom edge of this metal strip at an angle and cutting off that excess contact paper. This is essentially the same process as what I did around the sink. If your countertops don't have these little metal strips in the corners, then you could instead just use a single sheet of contact paper to continue from the backsplash all the way down onto the countertop. To get these perfectly tightly wrapped edges, I use once again my spatula and I pull tight on the contact paper and then use the spatula kind of pulling down on that contact paper to make sure that it is wrapped tightly around that corner. Then I tuck it underneath and using my hand stapler, I staple it securely in place. That has worked really well. I haven't had any issues at all with the contact paper coming loose or trying to lift up on the corners. So if you want to remove a piece of contact paper, that already has contact paper laying over it, you can just take your X-Acto knife and just 
score the edge right where you want it to come up at. The section in front of my stove had contact paper overlapping on both sides. And this was a section that I never really felt like looked right from the beginning. So I really wanted to replace this, but I didn't want to have to lift up both of the pieces on both sides of the stove as well. Going to replace that piece that has the little stain on the left hand side of the stove, but I will be doing that the exact same way that I replaced that section next to the sink. So I'm not going to show you guys that right now. I mainly just wanted to show you how to remove a piece that had overlapping contact paper. So when you are installing your contact paper on that front edge in front of your stove or your sink, you want to make sure it's running in the exact same direction as the direction it is on the rest of the countertops. So with this small of a piece, I trim it to the length that I need, and then I just pull the backing off of the entire thing. And then I place it on the countertops, still leaving some overlapping that edge of the stove. And then I use my spatula to make sure that it is pushed up tight in that crease and that I have all of the bubbles out up to the edge of the counter. And then I use the same method of pulling it tight around that corner so that I get a really nice seamless edge. Then I just trim the contact paper down and I seal it with silicone just like I did on the sink. Now I'm going to show you guys how I did my rounded corners by redoing the contact paper on my breakfast bar. This is also the area where I had scuffed up that one edge, so I'm getting rid of that at the same time. This time, I measured the piece to hang over on both of the sides and on the end of the counter. I will be wrapping this piece around the edge on all three sides. And here, I'm going to get started the same way I did on the other section that I did, by peeling it back a few inches and getting that first section stuck down to the countertop. When you're working with a larger area like this, you do want to take your time, move slowly, and work carefully. It's a lot easier to mess up, to make any type of mistake, or to leave bubbles under the contact paper when you're working with this large of an area. I have two different ways that I have tested out on wrapping these rounded corners. I'm going to show you both. I started off by going ahead and pushing it down against the sides on both of the sides and the very end of the breakfast bar. Right where the corner starts to curve, take your X-Acto knife and cut a slit all the way from the edge of the counter down to the end, and then cut another slit about half an inch away from that. Now that I have that first section of the rounded corner cut, I can go ahead and staple the side next to it. So for this first method, I literally just cut slits in the contact paper about a half of an inch apart, and I wrap it tightly around that corner, and using my stapler, I secure it underneath the counter. Now this particular corner of my countertop had some of the original laminate pieces already chipped off and missing, so I didn't have a perfectly flat, smooth surface to work with underneath it. So because of that, you can see some little imperfections in the way the contact paper looks when it's laying over that particular area. It doesn't stick as well because it's on a, like a particle board instead of a laminate, which it sticks really well to the laminate, but it's contact paper. So I don't expect it to be perfect anyways. And the second way that I show you how I did this, I feel like helps cover that up. But as you can see here, where I do have the laminate pieces that are supposed to be on the counter underneath it, it looks almost perfect. So if you don't have any flaws or damage to your rounded corners, you could probably only do this step on your corners and get a really nice finish. And I liked the fact that it doesn't end up wrinkled like the method with the hair dryer does. Also, if you use a stapler, just take a hammer when you're done and hammer in those little staples that don't go in all the way. So getting to the very end of my rounded corner, you can see that this one piece wants to kind of wrinkle up whenever I went to lay it down. 
that's a good sign that you probably need to go ahead and cut one more slit and secure that down before you secure down the straight surface. And before I show you my second method, here's a quick glimpse at the other corner. So method two is pretty simple. I'm just taking a long strip of the contact paper, I'm peeling off the back, lining up one edge with the edge of the countertop, and sticking it on all the way around the corner. This is a really easy way to do this, although I would say that I would probably have done the first step underneath this either way. I like having that smooth transition and I feel like the contact paper wrapping all the way around the edge of the countertop helps to give it that smooth finished look. But I also feel like wrapping this contact paper in one solid piece all the way around the corner helped to hide where those little slits in the contact paper were from the first process. I did still cut slits in the contact paper though, about an inch apart from each other this time, just so that I could wrap it underneath and secure it with my stapler. And this is how the corners look after using that second method. I really think I prefer the way it looks having both of these methods done together. I absolutely love my kitchen now and there is not a day that I wish I had not done these countertops. So if you're on the fence, all I have to say is just do it. Take the plunge. I promise you, you will love them. If you guys have any questions, feel free to leave it in the comment section down below and I promise I will get back to you. And if you haven't subscribed already, feel free to do so and hit that bell for notifications so you don't miss out the next time I upload a video. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I will see you guys next time.